there's an urgent matter that I want to discuss. Uh, it, was, it was not that many weeks back, a few months back, I had Dr. Joseph Nicolosi Jr. on the air with me. His dad was a pioneer in helping men with unwanted same-sex attractions through counseling, through insights into their own life development. And then uh, Dr. Nicolosi Jr. has carried on with that work and was on the air to talk about some amazing insights that, that he and his, his team have developed just as, as they've applied uh, aspects of trauma counseling, general trauma counseling to people with unwanted same-sex attractions and, and seen real fruit in lives being changed. And we've spoken openly about the attack on so-called conversion therapy. That's the way the critics paint it. But there, there's a ban now in Canada. Anyone of any age who has unwanted same-sex attraction and wants to get professional help is banned by doing so under the law. We linked to Dr. Licolosi's videos. We talked about the important work he was doing. And now he himself has suffered uh, the hand of the censor. He has had his own videos banned. Hey, Dr. Nicolosi, thanks for joining us again on the Line of Fire. So uh, tell us what's actually happened. Ha has YouTube actually removed your videos? They banned all of them. The last time I was on your show, you're right, we were talking about this study that had come out uh, in the Journal of Human Sexuality, a five-year study uh, with 75 participants, 75 men. Um, and we found that these independent researchers found that by doing trauma treatment uh, and tracking these individual sexuality, they noticed statistically significant decreases in their homosexual thoughts, feelings, behavior, and identity, and increases in their thoughts, feelings, behavior, and identity, and, uh, and increases in well-being. So we put out videos talking about the study. We did a whole series of videos talking about the research, how there's plenty of published peer-reviewed uh, studies which are being uh, shielded from the public, but they do show this. And then YouTube in the dead of night on uh, uh, Friday night, uh, pulled the plug on the entire channel, and I got a single notification from them saying that the entire channel was guilty of so-called hate speech, mm. um, and, and uh, that the, every single thing that we had posted would automatically be banned. And, uh, and what happened when you tried to appeal? I, I wrote them. I said, look, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. Every single uh, uh, study that we mentioned, it's, uh, it's evidence-based. It's, it's published in a peer-reviewed journal. We use these exact same trauma treatments for heterosexuals, for example, with a pornography addiction. Um, and uh, there was no response from them, just a complete shutdown of the channel, and no references of the study um, exist. They have scrubbed the record of all the scientific materials showing this information. All right. First, how did you feel when that happened? I, I was shocked. I was at first I thought it must be a mistake. It must be a glitch. I've heard of this happening to other people. Mm -hmm. This must be a misunderstanding. So I wrote them that that one single uh, appeal that they gave me, and then they shut it down without without any further discussion. That's when it, the reality started to set in. It feels like a kick in the gut, doesn't it? Totally, absolutely. And and, and th so how it felt was shocking. But then what really came up for me was wait a second. This isn't a me that they're after. They're shutting down speech, and I'm not the real victim here. The real victim is the client, is the people who are sexually abused, or the people who want to go on the internet and find out their different treatment options, uh, other than uh, the, the pop culture ethos of LGBT. They want to hear other, and so ultimately, it's those people who are having their choices robbed from them. Mm. Uh, all right. You're a, you're a Christian. You're a thinking man. You are not looking for some secret bogeyman everywhere trying to attack us. But, but this is a literal, fundamental attack on some of our most fundamental freedoms. Remember, YouTube is supposed to be a neutral platform. And it's one thing if I was telling people how to make a bomb and giving out private addresses to bomb someone's house. Of course, that should be banned. But there is even under YouTube guidelines – you didn't violate anything. There's nothing that could be called hate speech. So what, what's the larger ideological battle driving this? What, what are we actually fighting against? I think that's what you're hitting the, the nail on the head. There is something larger that's going on, which is that, you know, on these platforms, big tech promotes many scientifically incorrect videos about gender issues. You can go on there right now and hear all sorts of things. But by 
silencing scientific evidence that they don't like. What they are doing is they are effectively shaping the public conversation about the science of sexuality and, in gen and, and about gender. And ultimately, in the name of anti-bullying and stopping medical misinformation, it's big tech themselves who have now become the real bullies. And in doing so, they mislead the very people that they say they're, they're trying to protect, individuals who struggle with trauma and their sexuality. Yeah. And again, knowing how you present things, how you presented things on the air, I don't even have to watch the videos to know there's, there's not going to be anything that under any reasonable standard could be called hate speech. And, and again, you're, you're speaking as a professional and reviewing studies and, and looking at the help, the help that they are bringing to, to people. We're not talking about kidnapping a 16 year old teenager who identifies as lesbian and forcing her into some camp to be reprogrammed. God forbid. So it, the ideological battle is real. I mentioned on the year yesterday that in 2004 is, is when I first realized that LGBT activism was the principal threat, not would be, but was already the principal threat to freedom of religion, speech, and conscience. And we're seeing it now played out in, in all these different ways. So what is the big threat to the idea that someone who identifies as homosexual can change. Why is that concept so terribly threatening? That concept and, and the scientific evidence that undergirds that concept is a threat because uh, we are telling people, particularly children, that they are, if they have a certain form of sexuality, if they're LGBT, they were born that way, they'll always be that way, uh, and their only choice is to celebrate it or live a life of misery and self-denial. And when somebody else presents a third option, that is a major threat to, uh, to the prevailing narrative. And, and what about the idea that gay rights are civil rights, that gay is the new black or trans is the new black, that right. these things are innate and immutable, I'm born this way, I can't change. So if that gets challenged, doesn't that challenge this whole idea of gay as the new black? Right, that's right. It, it, it challenges the, the, the foundations of the concept that LGBT rights are automatically uh, civil rights. And we can automatically transpose uh, the civil rights uh, victories of the 60s onto the struggles today. And if, if we realize that sexuality is not necessarily immutable, and that for at least some percentage of the population, trauma has an impact on our sexuality, um, that is a big threat. Yeah. All right. First, give out your website to those that, that do want to find out more about what you do and, and, and the things that you're talking about here uh, the website is reintegrativetherapy.com, reintegrativetherapy.com. Um, we can click on the science page to look at the science, um, look at how there's many studies that have shown that sexuality can change for many people. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's actually very robust literature. Um, so reintegrativetherapy.com, and we've been able to get the videos up on another platform, a much, much smaller platform, but people can watch the videos that YouTube uh, banned and decide for themselves whether or not this is so-called hate speech. All right. One other question. What happened to your late father and his books? So, uh, and, oh, this is, oh, <laughs> this is what they call tragic comic. It's somewhere between funny and, and tragic. Um, so a two, roughly two years ago, uh, someone uh, created a, a petition to get all of my father's books banned from Amazon. And uh, Someone posted this on, on uh, one of these websites where you can create petitions, and uh, LGBT activists got on board, and they, they got a lot of people to sign it. And Amazon caved, uh, and they banned all of my father's books. And then in an interview about a month later, um, a gay newspaper, uh, they interviewed the, the man who started the whole petition in the first place. And they said, well, tell us about it. How, how did this get started? What, what about the books did you not like? And the guy admitted he'd never even read the books. He was simply offended by their titles. And yeah. so that was reason enough. Yeah. And, and again, your, your dad was a pioneer and highly respected in the field and, and, and known for the work that he had done. And yet, it actually, has, this is really wild. Your dad's books get banned on Amazon. YouTube bans your channel. It, it's, it's really extraordinary. So friends, go to reintegrativetherapy.com. Find out more about this research, about pe how people can be helped. Spread the word. 
And, and because all of my videos do get uh, checked on YouTube, to whoever's watching this on, on YouTube, you need to reconsider the ban. There is no hate speech here whatsoever. All this is is the kind of heavy-handed censorship that really all of us on all sides deplore. So, Dr. Nicolosi, we can't silence the truth. We keep getting the message out, but we're standing with you and we'll do whatever we can to help promote your work. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. So subscribe today. Doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire, and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.